Hello and welcome to Switch Statements video tutorial. In this tutorial, we will cover switch statements in a menu-driven program. I realize there are many textbook definitions of switch statements out there, so in this video tutorial, I'm not going to bore you guys with another definition. Rather, I want to walk you all through a program to learn switch statement hands-on. Before we start, let's look at the syntax and the structure of a switch statement. As you can see, we start by switch and then your expression. Your expression here is the input from the user, which will be either an integer or a single character, unless you define your own expression. Uh, but let's not worry about that right now. Let's learn this before we do all the other fun stuff with it. Uh, and then it's following by uh, open curly braces, which signals the beginning of the switch statement block. All the switch statements will be within this block. Okay, let's look at this program. We'll start by importing the libraries, and then right after the libraries, I have my class, and then, of course, the main. So here I'm declaring a variable choice as a type char. I'm using char because I want to be able to use characters like A, B, C as my menu options. If I wanted it to use numbers like one, two, three, then I would be using int. Your menu options has to be either int or char. You can define your own variables, but Let's leave those fun stuff for after you learn switch statements. So for now, we can either use int or char. So here I have a bunch of print statements to tell the user what the options are. For example, if the user chooses A, then we're going to add two numbers. If, if they choose B, then we're going to tell them if the input is even or odd, and so on and so forth. So right after we finish with writing all of our cases or the menu options, we're now creating the scanner object to be able to get input from the user. And then here we are getting the actual user input. Now here's the structure of switch statement in Java. You will need to write switch which is a Java keyword and then choice which is our expression. Choice is the menu option that the user will be inputting. Now we have the cases over here. Since we cannot control what the user will be inputting with respect to uppercase A or lowercase A, then I'm using what's called fall through to kind of ignore the cases. And here's how it works. When the user inputs, let's say A, to choose our first option, since I don't have any break statement here in between case lowercase A and case uppercase A, regardless of what the user inputs, this case will be read. Now here I can write the whole program as it relates to my menu option and um, follow through with the program. So in this first case, for example, um, as promised, user wants to add two numbers to find the sum of two numbers that they're going to input. So a simple printout statement asks the user to input two numbers and then the program will sum it and return the result. Again, it is important to use the break here afterward because if you don't use the break statement, it's going to fall through and all the cases are going to be read. Same thing with this case B. We write a short little program that calculates whether the number user input is even or odd and then we'll print the result and then the break statement. Uh, case C is a simple printout statement that tells the user what is the structure of a for loop and case D will end the program. Having a default statement can work as an input validation. If the user inputs something aside from cases A through D that we have given an option in the menu option, then the default statement will be executed and this message will be printed out. And then here we close our keyboard indicating that we no longer accept input and ending the program here. Let's run this program. So I'm going to run this program by clicking here. So here's my menu option and it's going to ask me which one of these you want to pick. I'm going to start with A and regardless of if I put uppercase or lowercase, because of the fault rule we have in the program, it's going to work. So it's asking me for two number. I'm going to be putting two number and then here is the sum. Let's run the program again and this time we're going to use another option. Let's use B instead. It's going to ask me to enter a number. I'm going to enter a number and over here it tells me whether the number is even or odd. Let's rerun the program again. Now over here I'm going to put capital C. And it's still it's working and over here giving it's giving me the for loop structure. I'm going to rerun the program again. This time I'm going to 
use D to quit the program and here it goes it's quitting the program now what happens if I input let's say something else aside from a, a through D let's say put a file over here the default statement it's actually executing over, and it's telling the user to input the right information let me run the program again and this time I'm gonna just put some gibberish I run the program again it's going to do my input validation and it's going to give me a message saying that input the correct information one thing i want to mention before ending this video tutorial is that did you happen to notice how we have to keep closing the console and rerunning the program to test our output for different menu options it's very annoying isn't it that's because we don't have a loop in our program to give us the choice to choose another menu option I didn't implement any loop in this video tutorial to reduce confusion. However, it's important to implement loops in menu driven programs, and I will cover them on my next video. You may find it useful to subscribe to this channel so you can get notification for the next videos as well as having access to all the videos at all times. This concludes this video tutorial. If this video was helpful, give it a like to let me know and comment to tell me what other topics you want me to cover.